<laughs> so it has to be a short meeting. All right, welcome everyone to the weekly um, JS IPFS dev call. We have a uh, prepared open. So first of all, we need a note taker. Any volunteers? I can take that. All right, thank you. Um, in this meeting, then mm, 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 note taking isn't too much work because everyone is posting his items anyway. Um, please, everyone, put your name under the attendee list if you want to show up in the protocols. Um, all right. Um, today, um, the meeting is without David. Um, therefore, I'm the host for today. And um, are there any... So if there's any additional agenda items, please put them on the agenda list and we will get to them after the round table. So let's get started. Um, <laughs> I get started with me, so, um, and yeah, and as with so many people, please uh, keep it short. So I think it's more important to know what roughly the others did, so don't get into too much detail. Um, so, I work again on the DAG API for the IPFS JavaScript stuff, and hopefully it will soon be finished for the CLI as well as for the HTTP API. And I'm also looking to the flow typing stuff. So for those who are not aware of it, we want to move, uh, introduce a type system called flow, and we're currently starting with some repositories and we try to move them over to flow. Um, all right, that's for me. So the next one on my list is Vesco Santos. If I pronounce the names wrongly, please correct me. All right. Vesco, mm. can you? Hear us? I think he's not there. Probably not. Well, then we just move on and then we come back to him later on. So, <laughs> who's next on the list? Um, Hugo. Um, let's see. Hi guys. Is he here? Yes. So, I'm still onboarding so i've been reading all the documentation uh, going through all the repositories and stuff like that uh, i had a talk with uh, david uh, to talk about the okrs um, i selected everything we talked about it so uh, we only need to complete the definition of each item and for this week uh, I will be working on um, at least two issues. One will be um, um, improving the error meshes on the CLI, uh, and the other one will be uh, finishing up or working with a uh, already open pull re pull requests about the accepting uh, standard input uh, on the CLI on the commands that make sense to accept uh, uh, standard input directly on the CLI. So it will be basically it for now. All right, thank you. So the next one is Aching Brain. Hi, um, so last week I was uh, on holiday, so didn't get uh, anything done, um, but I've been working on this uh, stream slicing. So if you use, if you try to cut a readable stream to take a an offset and a length, um, previously it was begin and end, and it followed the JavaScript slice uh, semantics. But uh, some there was a request on the spec to make it be uh, offset and length, so it's consistent with the uh, files read command in uh, the Go implementation. So the interesting thing about that is, is it, it uses uh, offset and count instead of offset and length, which to me seems really weird. Um, 
and not very natural kind of thing. I don't know if anyone who's got any strong opinions about whether it should be offset length versus offset count. Um, literally just the name of the argument. Anyway, so I'm going to finish that off uh, hopefully tomorrow uh, and then pick up where I left off on the MFS implementation. That's me. All right, thank you. So I'm definitely for length instead of count, but all right, so uh, Jacob is next. Yeah, so last week I got the S3 data store working. Uh, so there's a new repo for that. Um, and then I started looking at the private network stuff. I'll be continuing on that this week. Um, I also am going to be working on making the um, file locker for the repo an optional. Um, Thing, as well as making that configurable because it's an issue we ran into with S3 is right now you can only specify an FS or a memory lock file. So being able to extend that or just mark it as optional. So I'll be working on that um, today and tomorrow. And I have no blockers. All right. Um... I just had to get more people in, so I have no clue why this is a manual thing for me, but all right. So um, who's next on the list is FS Diogo. What's your update? Hello. Just a note. Vasco says he's stuck. He can't uh, enter. I already room. managed to get in. Oh. <laughs> all right. Yeah. I will do after Hugo probably. Okay, uh, so my update of last week, I've been working, uh, trying to solve the Uglify issue, uh, made a bunch of pull requests like last week. I'm a little bit blocked because many repos need to be released. Uh, David is doing that, also Volker helped me with that today. Uh, for this week, I'll try to, to end this issue to solve it. Uh, make the, all the dependencies in every repos uh, to be up to date and uh, make a, a little lab um, working with uh, a minified version of uh, IPFS. That's it. All right, thank you. Uh, then we go on with Vasco. Uh, Is he back now? Yeah. Hey guys, sorry, my computer just crashed and reboot. So uh, this was finally my onboarding week. Uh, in the beginning, uh, like Monday and the end uh, of Tuesday, I mostly read documentation and uh, watched some talks. Later then, uh, I started looking for some issues, for usually easy or moderate difficulty, like David suggested. Uh, mainly, the, uh, I, I uh, created a public read-only method for getting the host data, uh, then uh, provide access to bundled libraries when in browser, uh, display error when using unknown CLI options, and then I started uh, another issue, but uh, in the weekend uh, it was uh, created a pull request by another user, so uh, I just did the review today. Um, Blocked uh, about the OKRs, uh, I had a task uh, there. I talked to David, the service worker, but I need uh, more information about it. And meanwhile, I wait for that uh, information. I will continue in the issues. And uh, it's all. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, the next one is Dimitri. Uh, so last week I mainly worked on the multiplexer posting uh, implementation. Um, I managed to get it to pass uh, with the switch uh, and in, and the native interrupt with the whole multiplexer, and I got pretty much all the tests and would be to be passing except for one. Um, and then, so I, I think I made some pretty good progress uh, with remaining there just to have some uh, tougher uh, error validation and or error handling and uh, make it a little bit faster 
by perhaps using a, a, a memory pool or not allocating so many buffers from the other place. Um, and then uh, also the, the uh, timeout for the stop and kill in Applicus DCTL, which was given issues to so many users that were trying to use Applicus DCTL and, and uh, electron apps and uh, just just uh, like standalone applications that um, if you have a uh, if you don't shut down the IPFS um, daemon properly, it will leave the log files uh, behind and then when trying to restart it, it will not allow you to do so. So increasing the timeout should help with that. Uh, disposable rep reboots uh, are still running with the same timeout and then you're also allowed to pass your Custom time after the stuff and kill functions. Uh, so, um, so going to continue working on the multiplexer this week as well. I think I'm pretty close to wrapping. Uh, I need to make uh, JSPFS and interrupt this pass as well, but I think this week I'll be able to 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 get that that done. All right. Thank you. The next one is Gar. Hello. I uh, finally last week got all the sub dependencies and tests for the Raptor directory to work, so that's ready. Um, I also added uh, in the data store um, a sync flag, which the original issue asked for the ability to sync, but it turns out that's the default, so I added a flag to turn that off, which exactly mirrors how it turned out with Go, uh, the Go IPFS implementation. I'm not blocked on anything. <clears throat> this week I'm looking into the uh, implementation status uh, markdown file for the things that the JS implementation uh, wants to have and doesn't yet. Uh, this morning I looked and it looks like the bit swap unwant is in there. It's just not exposed yet. So I'll be, uh, that's what I'm working on is just going down that list. All right, thank you. So next one is, I think everyone can read it himself, but it's, it's John. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I'm pretty sure that I've had a, added a, uh, um, a couple of the things that I've worked on over the past couple months. I have been added and should be updated in implementation status uh, markdown document. So uh, I will also go try to look at that and and add the ch changes that I know that have been uh, approved, yeah, added since then, um, that I've written since then. Um, so last week I didn't do that much. Um, I think I fixed, continued to just kind of look at and review, kind of clean up uh, the pin work. Um, it is ready for review on, um, or maybe ready for like a final uh, sweep. Um, I've pinged a couple, uh, places and and some have listed some things that might not have received enough attention. Maybe they have, but they just didn't have any comments. So I just want to make sure that they did get some attention um, in the the giant pin PR on JSIPFS. Um, and yeah, so whenever you guys have time to, whenever anyone has time, if you want to look through that and make any suggestions, um, I think that there are there's maybe two um, ongoing issues with that, but I don't quite know if it's in the scope. Uh, to solve of the pin PR to solve them or and there's also another thing that I just don't know if it's doing anything but I want to make sure that every that uh, I get another opinion on that um, and that's all in the pin um, comments um, another thing was that so this weekend I spent some time basically just yesterday spent some time looking at kind of like Dropbox like like, like cloud storage solutions and files file sharing um, things with the idea and this is prompted by David tell, asked me about this, but with the idea that of maybe building like a pure D app uh, uh, for like a like a pure box um, kind of application based on the CRDT work that Pedro's doing and all the dis other dynamic data stuff. So I would love to. I just actually made a proposal for that like two minutes ago, uh, and I have a link to it in, in the crypt pad. Um, I would love for feedback if anyone wants to um, give their ideas um, on that. <clears throat> and I'd love to talk to Pedro because I s still, you know, I just have like a high level understanding of what might be needed for that.
All right, thank you. So the next one is uh, Maciej. So um, I've been mainly working on some weird crashes from the uh, JS Atlas daemon. It was uh, sometimes crashing with weird errors for some reason, and with a few PRs for that. I am also currently working on getting the JS IPFS CLI to run in the browser so that it can be used for um, documentation examples and other stuff so the user does not need to install IPFS on the uh, machine. And I've also created a small bash script that basically um, updates the CSS link records in an automated way. Um, I'm not blocked by anything, but I will um, work on uh, adding this CDI and YAML's um, multiplexer to the PDP dissector and um, eventually deploying the PDP node trust. Um, that's all for me. All right, thank you. So the next one is Pedro. Okay. So Good to have you here. <laughs> nice to, to be here. Um, so um, today I just finished um, a first iteration of the leap to peer connection management uh, library. Um, so for those that don't know, it's something that uh, the purpose of that is to allow um, more efficient connection management um, and for the application to be able to define the value of the peers and some thresholds above which it's not willing to go. And the thresholds may be number of connected peers or number of connected peers per transport or um, event loop delay or received or sent bytes uh, per minute. Um, so it's uh, the first, first iteration is, is there. I, I, I finished it. So I'm blocked on how to expose that on leap to peer and in consequence how to expose that on JS IPFS. Um, and I have a proposal for that. Um, also, I'm blocked on, on releasing the first version of that um, library. Um, and next week, I want to talk to John about Peerbox. Sounds really cool. Um, I want to do, uh, define and finish the, um, the connection management API in leap to peer I want to test that in the wild uh, with CRDT's applications and uh, IPLD stuff that I've been uh, uh, working on. Uh, and also, I'm going to uh, analyze what, what it's needed to address Kumavi's uh, requirements about connection management, where we want to be able to deny connections before they're established. So right now, connection management uh, works, doesn't work preemptive, preemptively in the sense that um, if a threshold is surpassed, we just kill the less, the peer, the connection with the peer with least, val least value, uh, whatever that, that means, um, by, uh, defined by the application. Um, but, but right now, uh, it still has to go through the SecIO dance, so uh, establishing a secure channel, etc. While um, Kumavis wants to, uh, depending on the transport, just deny uh, new connections uh, immediately. So I'm, I'm going to be, an, uh, well, uh, anyone is welcome to, uh, to, to help me on, on that. So I, I will be um analyzing that and see what are the required changes on all the interfaces and, tra and transports uh, if if there are any um, and that's it for me there was a question from dimitri yeah i was thinking that uh, i think umavis is mostly interested in rubber c uh, connections and um, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if it's possible to. I'm not. I don't know. But I. I don't. I, I looked briefly and I didn't find anything that allows it to run connections in the browser for the But uh, yeah, you're, you're you're right. I don't think there is um, a way to prevent connect prevent from from listening. I'm I'm not much sure, but I don't think there is. 
but uh, one thing we, can, we could prevent is um, not doing the all the the, the handshake of the, the sekayo dance on top of that. So if you could prevent that, that would be I think a win because we will disconnect from that peer anyway. So um, that that would save some some cycles. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, next one is Kumaris. M. Kumaris, you are still muted. Yes, hello. Um, you all covered my concerns very well. Um, building the P2P um, app, and it's all going to run over web to see. So, yeah, we have an issue with creating too many connections and bringing the browser down. Um, so, yes, uh, I think he, um, Pedro's approach is good, but then we're also um, very limited by what the Weber TC API is providing. So if we can like, really solidify that requirement, um, I think we can deliver that to Chrome, um, and hopefully they will provide that API. They've been shipping features in Weber TC, so that's nice to see. Um, so then, uh, once once uh, once I have that or have at least something, um, I can resume my peering experiments, and I can provide data of what um, how that performs in in a real world environment. Um, that's all. Thanks. All right, thanks. And then we have same. Cool. Uh, not too much. Um, hacked on uh, pull streams uh, and get, so there's a PR out. Um, probably needs a little bit more work on test, um, but I'm looking for feedback just to make sure it's the right direction, it's the correct interface, and everyone's happy with it. Um, the thing there is that I'm the becoming king of breaking changes everywhere. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of sort of like PRs that are kind of in stasis um, that are kind of blocked on the IPLD format change. And then once that goes through, I will go through all the little projects and make the rest of the breaking changes and add tests. Um, up next, um, sort of uh, gun for hire anywhere. Um, but I was thinking maybe I'll jump into libp 2 p see what help wanted uh, issues are available and take those up. Uh, unless there's something in IPLD that's like more pressing, that's more or less free to take up. I didn't really see much that wouldn't already be blocked by IPLD format changes, I think. All right, that's it. All right, thanks. Uh, a quick update on the IPLD format changes. So I'm, I'm still on it. So I'm one hand on the floats things, the other on the format changes, but I really get to push them through. So hopefully this week, perhaps we will get some definitive mergers and then uh, we'll see. All right. Um, we already reached the half an hour, which should be the end of the meeting. So everyone is free to leave, but I would want to know because like, as we are so many people, finally, and if it still makes sense to make the uh, round table the way we currently do it. Because as you can see, we already reached the half an hour. Um, so my proposition would be, perhaps we should just um, put the same things as we currently do into the crypt pad. If we basically don't talk about the, what we've done and what we do next, but we only talk about the blog stuff and perhaps in a new section called questions or something. So you can then basically discuss with someone that you need to talk to. Like, for example, like Zane wants to talk with me about the um, format changes or Pedro with Dimitri and Kumavas or something. So we have more time for this. So are there any opinions? All right. Uh, for, me, for, for me, it's uh, kind of useful to, to, for people to verbalize it because like links to PRs are very succinct and are not tell a bunch of information. So since I'm new, I'm new to this group, I, I, would, I would prefer that people verbalize it uh, themselves. Um, but that's me. M, yeah, okay. Uh, Dimitri? Um, 
I sort of agree with Pedro. I think it's still there's still value in having uh, the, the, talking about the trick you've done and the trick you're doing. But I think this meeting is just too short to add value after that. I, mean, I think it maybe we just have to increase it a little bit, 45 minutes or something. It's only once a week, so I think it's, uh, it's not a good thing. All right. Um, uh, perhaps um, another idea is that, like, to somehow shorten it some way. Perhaps just talking about the the things that you've worked on, because as you can't really predict what you will, like, of course you have a plan to work on, but like it doesn't really matter that much, like what you will work on. So perhaps we basically skip it down to just what you've worked on, what you've worked on, and things to discuss, because it could potentially make it like a. Uh, a third faster, perhaps, <laughs> ideally, um, just as an idea, but um, yeah, um, Carl? I, uh, in this very meeting though, uh, I talked about what I'm planning on working on and um, it was realized by someone else that, that the thing I was gonna work on uh, needed to be updated because some things had already been worked there. So I, I, I already saw that there was value in that. Okay, so I guess the, the, like, it seems like a good idea might be that we make it officially like 45 minutes long, so we don't overrun it by an hour. <laughs> and um, then perhaps like, again, like trying to make everyone basically yeah, reducing it to the important things. So basically keep it short. Um, but all right, because like I personally also like, um, I also prefer basically to hear from people. So I have, basically for me, it is about the awareness, like, Who's working on what to get an idea if I have any questions? All right, so I don't want to overrun it even more. So are there any further comments? I don't see any hands. So uh, thanks for attending. So I closed the meeting for today and we talk next week. Goodbye. Bye, Bye guys.